Hello, in this video, we are going to go over the remix IDE. In the previous video, I just showed you what it was, which is basically an online integrated development environment that you can just run in a browser, currently offline as well, but I recommend it online, that allows you to create blockchain Ethereum Solidity based applications, so dApps. So I'm gonna show you, you know, what all the buttons do, what every little pane is, so all that good stuff. So if you already had the website, great. If not, just go to Remix ID into Google. It's just remix.ethereum.org. So we have it loading now. So there's four main areas to do with this ID. And it will feel very similar if you use stuff like Xcode and Visual Studio. So on the left, we have our sort of file explorer, our solution explorer. And now we've got our solution here and we've got all these files. So let me just actually delete some of these files. These are files that I actually created before. So we have a fresh project. So let me get rid of these. And uh, let me get rid of this. We'll put this back in there. So now it's back to how it was, you know, when I first created it and how it will be for yourself. So this is your solution explorer. And you can do the delete button yet to delete files. And apart from that, really not much more to it that, than that that you should actually know about. And we've got this button at the top. And this is just to create a new file. This is to add a local file. This is to publish it to GitHub. This is to copy all files to a, like another instance of like Solidity. That's pretty cool. So you might have multiple instances. And this is to connect it to your local host. So like I said, you can have a local version running. And now this section right here is your editor. This is where you'll probably spend most of your time where you'll be running your, I mean, writing your code, I should say. And Turn side down if you want very easily. So if you want more room, you can zoom in and out like so. Very cool stuff. And here is your name and the actual sort of directory of the file. You can close it and obviously let's just open it again. This is just the code, it has IntelliSense, all that basic stuff. And down here we have the console. We can close it, collapse it. This just clears all the console's output, which is nothing at the moment. We've got some filtering options. We can search for more advanced filtering and we can listen on the network. And we can change the size of this very easily. So if we're looking at the console heavily, we can easily change it. Now the right hand side, you can close this as you can close literally all the panes except for this middle pane because that's sort of the main pane where you'll be spending most of your time. And you can compile it here. So you got six tabs and we'll go through every single one. So you can compile it. I've got it set to auto compile. That's what it's set to automatically. And that's what I recommend. And simple storage is just the contract. So this is called simple storage that allows you to actually well, select multiple contracts over multiple files. Here's just some warnings and you can take a look at these details of this particular contract metadata a really really cool information you can publish it as well and you can go to run in here you can change some of the run properties so change the environment i recommend leaving it to javascript vm for more information let's click here you can change the different account so you have some ether in there so you can use that while you know testing your contract you have a gas limit i have a separate video covering what gas is in the ethereum ecosystem so feel free to check that out got a value which you can change for stuff like ether for example so it's just all really cool properties again just change your contract and now from here you can run the contract so there's a few different ways of running it the basic way is to just click create it creates this contract so we've got these two methods if I click get, get zero, because stored data has nothing in it. If I type five into here, click set, and I set the value. And if I click get, it gets that value, because that's what it said. And obviously, you know, all the calls that are happening, you can see details about them. You can debug it if you want to. So it's like really, really cool stuff. And you have debug buttons as well. So you can just collapse it. And what you can do is create multiple contracts. And one of the reasons you might want to do that is for example, for example, if I set this to five, and then if I click get, it's getting five. Maybe I want to test something out. And in this test, I want to, I want to times it by eight. So I want to times the result by eight. So if I click, it automatically saves it by the way. If I click set, get, it's still 
doing it by five you know it's only just returning the core value it's not times in it by eight and that's because this is a an example that's already been created so if i click create again and i click set get works the same way if i click five though type five in set that return it, it returns 40 because this is of the new updated contract but again if i were to update it it wouldn't affect these old contracts at all all so that's like really really cool stuff so you can easily just delete them like so another cool thing that you can do is click this button copy the contract and so you can load it from another contract so you just have this unique id but click at address and it loads that contract so if i were to put five in here set get and it does that five and forty value so that and as you can see the id the hexadecimal values are the same here so that's a way of you know keeping track of it and you can click this you can either delete it like this or to create a few more click this and it, that clears all instances and this allows you to run a transaction but you need to actually have a json file so if we have this for example if i click save create a json file name it whatever you want i'm going to leave it default and if i open this i can actually run this now so i can actually click okay that's weird why that is not running correctly so let me just have a look, quick quick look at something so uh, let me just create the contract let me just save it and there we go so that that was my mistake so you, you needs to have a you know current one that's already you know already run and as you can see there's a bunch of information in here and what's really useful about that is it allows you to so let's say if i were to delete this let's say if i get rid of this now if i create the contract click type in five set get return five but if i go to scenario one and i click play i type in five set get it returns 40 so that's a great way of keeping track of an old instance without actually having a plug in it up down here so that's really really cool the other thing i just want to quickly show you and you'll you know experience this yourself and you're actually developing it let me close this down a bit is if let's say i put something like that there that's invalid that's not valid code anymore and that won't run so as you can see the contracts disappeared because there's something wrong with it and it wants you to fix it so I think that's like a really cool thing. I, I, I found this about the Remix ID, even though it's just a, a development environment inside a browser, it has some really cool advanced features, like the way the debug system is, the way this instancing is, about you know the way you can't, like you just, you can immediately see there's something wrong with it, that the contract doesn't appear in the contract dropdown like, area. I think that's just fantastic. Like, some of the cool features in here are just like really, really cool. I've used, you know, advanced ids like xcode and visual studio from well companies that are worth you know billions of dollars well apple's the you know worth over half a trillion dollars what is it like at, at, at about 800 billion now microsoft was is worth you know hundreds of billions as well so it's not from small companies and these smaller ones they don't have some of these features so really really cool and settings you can just change the compiler version and you know, it's basic very basic settings here so that's where it lacks and the analysis so you can change the different security and you know the way the gas works in your application and that allows you to just you know just check if your application is you know just working the way you hope so and debugger as you know you can just click debug and trace through code and just a support page right here so that's it for the remix solidity id i know we've covered a lot but don't worry all of this will come natural if you've especially if you've already used an id if not don't worry when i start coding i will be explaining stuff as i go along i won't be skipping steps so thank you for watching and i look forward to seeing you in my next video oh yeah also as usual if you have any questions feel free to reach out and yeah see you soon